Good afternoon. Welcome to Beginner's Ear. I'm your host. My first name is Amadi, and my last name, it's very fun to say, it's pronounced Azikawe. For those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. For those of you who are returning, and I recognize some faces, welcome back. For the next hour, we are going to engage in mindfulness mixed with deep listening as we experience some wonderful music. With us here today is the band Sarafand, led by the violinist Lyal Shocker, and the other members of the band are Philip on the piano, Jake on cello, Nick on double bass, and Adam on percussion. Beginner's Ear grew out of the concept of beginner's mind, which is sort of a Zen approach to listening and being aware without any preconditions. As a musician, I can tell you that all of the performing artists really appreciate this kind of atmosphere. In fact, some of you may remember um, me playing on this series uh, last month on the 21st. And uh, we talked about that, and I will ask uh, the musicians about that as well. But it's a uniquely profound and powerful feeling when we can construct art out of the most deep concentration and relaxation. So just know that this couldn't possibly happen without all of you. Um, I would like to thank WQXR for the series, making it possible, the Jerome L. Green Foundation for their support, and Steinway for this beautiful piano. In a minute, I'm going to turn it over to Cayenne, who is going to lead us in about a 10-minute mindful practice, which I, I have to say, personally, I enjoy very much, and so I appreciate that. Thank you in advance for what we are about to experience. Okay, before we do that, I would like to ask everyone to turn off your cell phones, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Enjoy. So thank you, Amadi, and thank you all for being here. So as we arrive into our seat, I invite you to take a look at the space that you inhabit. And in that looking, perhaps see someone nearby. See them as a friendly collaborator about to enter with you into this journey of silence and sound. Then reestablish a comfortable seat and begin by listening. Listening to the full sound of the bell as it permeates your entire being into stillness. the sound fades into silence. Arrive in this moment with a few conscious breaths. Allowing now the eyes to close and rest deep into their sockets. As the attention draws inwards towards the dark 
caverns of the mind. Within this darkness, and for a moment, into the hour, let all your thoughts of agendas and responsibilities to settle and allow it to pour through the body and descend upon your feet. From this root, supported by the earth below, let your legs, the entire torso, settle and deeply rest into your seat. Allowing the hands and all the fingers to unfold, bathing in the warmth of awareness, while the palms pulsates with sensations of light and breathe. With each breath, let the light in the palms begin to expand up the arms, caressing the shoulders into alignment over the hips. Continue this ascension of light to soften the throat as the tongue settles down and back. The jaw releases into spaciousness. While the entire face bathes in the sensations of light. Encouraging the head to balance with ease over your neck, shoulders, and hips. Let the awareness expand throughout the entire body, radiating as an aura of light. And continue to expand this aura past your friendly collaborator. And fill up the entire space and breathe. space of awareness and light that is co-created. Listen, listen to its permeating sound of silence. 
and also the inner silence between each breath, sensation, or thought. In this quieting of being that is revealed through the act of listening to begin again and again. An orchestra of infinite potentiality through the here and now. Continue to meditate upon the sound of silence as you rest and listen again with beginner's ears to each breath, sensation, or thought. The sound of the bell. Let the silence slowly emerge, flowering the ears into presence and receptivity.
جيكور يا جيكور خل ومائي ينساب من قلبي من جرحي الواري من كل أغواري أواه يا شعبي جيكور يا جيكور هل تسمعين فلتفتح الأبواب الفاتحين ولتجمع أطفالك اللاعبين في ساحة القرية هذا العشاء هذا حصاد السنين الماء خمر والخواب غذاء هذا ربيع الوباء جيكور ماضيك عاد ورقرقت في مقلتي الدموع صحابة تحملني ثم صار يا شمس أيامي أمام الرجوع جيكور نامي في ظلام السنين على جدع زيتونة سأحفر كل ما ألقى وأحفر كل أسراري سأحفر رقم كل قصيمة من أرضنا سلبت وأشجار التي اقتلعت لكي أذكر سأبقى قائما جميع فصول المآسي كلها مراحل النكبة من الحبة إلى القبة على جدع زيتونة
was beautiful. <coughs> Wonderful. Thank you all so very much. Um, okay. For selfish reasons, first, <laughs> Lyle, can you tell us the nature of the two poems that you read? Um, so oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I'll take Okay. Yeah. So these two poems, um, I wrote, I read the, the at the end of the piece, mm -hmm. um, Return to Jaikur, I wrote, I read the poem um, by Badashai Sayyab, who is an Iraqi poet. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, and then this last piece was written by uh, the poet, the poem I read was written by poet Taufik Zayed, who is from Palestine. And um, both poems are actually rooted in, I would say, modern poetry, um, okay. which are an aspect of the poetry I've been working on, especially during that project. I started working with um, classical poetry and the way the rhythms um, of the poetry, the metrics and the meters, uh, gave me rhythmical elements to work with mm -hmm. musically. And then I started looking into uh, free verse poetry and uh, more modern uh, verse. And the Badr Shakir Sayyab, the Iraqi poet, is actually one of the pioneers of that movement in Arabic literature, modern Arabic mm -hmm. literature. And I just started seeking exactly the opposite of what I was seeking in the classical poetry, mm -hmm. um, meaning the fluidity, the fluidity of the words, of the phrases, the irregularity somehow. And, um, and so these two poems that I read today were part of that aspect of, the, of that work on poetry. Thank you. I think that's fascinating because one, when one thinks of music as relates to literature or visual art or anything, there really is an underlying rhythm that sometimes, sometimes we're aware of it, sometimes not. And I just think it's fascinating for one to take in two completely different art forms, yet find a common ground. So per, as a musician who mainly reads the notes in front of my face and make sure you play in tune with a nice sound, this is wonderful to know that you're doing this and that it came off so beautifully. So th thank you. And I understand there is a copy for everyone of the translation that you can pick up on your way out. Yeah. So thank you for that. I also want to, um, I warned the other members of the band that I would be picking on some of you. I can do that because I'm a former professor. It says that somewhere in the faculty handbook, somewhere in the back. Um, the nature, and I consider what we have experienced to be chamber music, but what everyone has such a clearly defined role. And so sometimes you are more prominent, sometimes you give more physically and emotionally, and then sometimes you yield. Uh, sometimes you are in complete synergy with one or more persons. I think we all listened and noticed that. And um, to the extent that we can create this energy, but within the context of having meditated and created our own energy as audience members. What was this experience like for you? I'll let you raise your hand. <laughs> Who of you wants to, to contribute? I think Nick has an answer, but <laughs> yes. Yeah, go ahead. Can you repeat the last part of the question? Sorry, can you repeat the last part again? Within please? the context of the energy that we have created mm -hmm. as audience members, we're, we're deep in thought. We are, I believe, setting a, an extraordinary um, sort of bed of communal sort of concentration. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, Philip wants to. Yeah. You so I felt it was a combination of the meditative space that we started with, but also the fact that we're playing acoustically right now, which we don't, mm. uh, I don't think we've ever done a performance completely acoustically. And I think the combination of those factors uh, just 
allowed me to feel that every single action I did on the piano would be heard and felt. Um, it made me feel like I didn't have to do very much to have a big effect in this space. I didn't have to fill a lot of space. I could play one note and it would be in the room and be felt. And that was actually really, that was nice and, and un unusual. Uh, really in any, any time I'm playing the piano, it's not always like that. So that's what I would say. I would add to the unusual part about that. It's, yeah, it's very uncommon that um, when we're performing, we have such focus and space in the room and how much it actually matters. Um, music is never, it never exists in a vacuum. The space you're doing in it, the space, you're the space that you're performing in matters. The audience attention matters. Um, yes, we are professionals and we try to, s we, we play as, well as we can in, at, on any given performance. But um, when we have an opportunity to really just fill the space with our acoustic sounds, it's very uncommon and it's a beautiful treat. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I would agree. As someone who maybe 1% or, or um, of the time spends some time outside of the purely acoustic world, um, yeah, there's a chance for listening and feedback. And, and I was going to mention that earlier, as musicians, we are listening as we're playing. So you are listening and we are listening. So it's not as if we prepared what we're going to do or play and then hope it comes out that way. No, we're actually turning ourselves, each of us, I think, into three people. Um, Lyal A says, all right, I'm going to play it this way. Lyal B says, okay, I'm listening, or executes that. Okay, yeah. And Lyal C says, oh, did Lyal B do what Lyal A wanted? <laughs> this is what happens to all of us on the stage, ladies and gentlemen. In the short amount of time that we have left, may I ask if anyone in the audience wants to comment or uh, has a question about what we experienced? here today, yes. Thank you very much. My question to you is, um, how do you approach tuning when dealing with pitch organization that comes from various parts of the world? And how do you approach tuning in acoustic settings versus other settings you've mentioned? I don't know what they are, but you can tell us maybe a little more about that. Thank you. Are you referring to untempered? Um, so um, it's it's an interesting question because it's not really a solution I have found and I'm applying to every setting or every time I perform or every time I write. It's really an um, ongoing research. Every piece, um, every even setting um, presents me with either, the, you can see it either as a challenge or an opportunity to try to find something else. But um, I think that what I try to do is I, in um, in both worlds, if you want to say, I isolate um, the pitches themselves from their hierarchy or their function, and I try to work with them all as if they are um, object of Im equal importance. And so, in that sense, um, tonality or temperament becomes uh, a tool of expression just as much as everything else. Meaning you can use an ornament, uh, you can also use the note itself, you can also bend the note itself uh, as, an, as an expressive uh, tool. And um, I sometimes also tackle the idea of working, um, well, I questioned a lot actually working with unequal temperament and the fact that I'm surrounded with musicians who are used to equal temperament and, well, piano. Um, but it's, again, it's all, um, everything is possible once you re-question the hierarchy or the function we are used to working with when, when, we com when it comes to pitch organization. Um, because those notes exist even if uh, you don't hear them, if you, if you listen closely, they do exist in the um, spectrum, the harmonic spectrum um, of every instrument. 
So it's just a matter of finding the right space and finding the right expression and finding the right um, melodic curve also. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. Thank you all so much for making this experience possible for us. Thank you, Kayan. Yeah. Thank you so and much. Thanks all of you. Thank you, Corina. And, and we have one audience member who would like to say something before we all go. Hi, um, my name is Corinna. I'm the founder of Beginner's Ear, and this being the last of this inaugural eight-week uh, series of lunchtime music meditations, I just wanted to take this moment to also thank you all for those who are here for the first time for your open minds, for many of you who have come several times for your, your loyalty and, and support. Um, it's really um, an experiment that I hope you will all carry into your lives in one way or another. Um, just how we can translate a little bit of this experience into how we listen to, to life, to communications outside of the concert hall. To what extent we can maybe open our ears um, to a more receptive and a more centered way of listening if perhaps we begin just by a single breath before an important phone call or just a moment of becoming aware of where we are and in space and in our bodies. Um, and, um, and it was really my idea, and thank you, Layal, for being game, to uh, just drop a tiny bit of spoken word into this very last program. Um, I knew that this music was grown out of, composed out of, and inspired by poetry. Um, and I just thought it was a beautiful way of trying to see how we might experience poetry as sound when we hear it in a language that I'm assuming most of us don't understand. Um, and I thought that was a really wonderful way of, of hearing um, in your lovely voice also just the rhythms and the cadence and the sound colors um, of words um, without understanding them, so truly with a beginner's ear. So thank you once again. Um, on your way out, there is a set list and there is also a printout of the two poems if you'd like to take them with you. And please do check in on beginnersear.com and on the greenspace.org for any future news. Thank you again and have a lovely day.